Many friends, but at the top of that list, uh, Rosa DeLauro, a representative from the 3rd District, and Johanna Hayes from the 5th District. I'll turn it over to them in a moment. Uh, today, we are introducing in both the House and the Senate legislation that will make it absolutely clear that this administration cannot use federal dollars to put guns in our nation's classrooms. The last thing that our schools need is to be loaded up with weapons that doesn't stop school violence that terrifies children who are already living in fear of being the next victim and it is not something that teachers want or are asking for across this country now i would submit to you that the law is perfectly clear already in fact title four which funds many school programs says that those dollars can only be used for policies that are going to lead to weapons-free schools. The secretary has ignored that section of the law and is proposing to allow schools to use federal dollars for weapons purchases and weapons training. Uh, our resolution that we're introducing today makes perfectly clear for the secretary that there is already today a prohibition in the law that doesn't allow for federal funds to be used to put guns in schools. And that prohibition was supported by Republicans and Democrats because Republican parents in Connecticut and Democratic parents in Connecticut both agree that you are going to make our schools less safe rather than more safe by loading them up with weapons. Teachers have way too much to do today as it is. They need to be educators. They need to be social workers. They need to be grief counselors. Uh, they don't need to be marksmen and have to go through the training associated with that as well. And unfortunately, in schools that do allow guns, and there are some that do today, we have way too many examples of those guns going off accidentally. There are far more guns in homes that are used accidentally to shoot someone than are used to kill intruders. The same thing will happen in our schools. There was one case in which uh, there was a school safety demonstration happening inside a classroom and a uh, gun accidentally went off inside the classroom during the safety demonstration. Many examples of guns uh, that were possessed by teachers being left out and open in classrooms, in bathrooms, in public areas. More guns equals more risk for America's children. And this legislation today, supported by teachers, supported by parents, and supported by the thousands of kids who today are walking out of their classrooms all across America calling on Congress to pass more significant anti-gun violence uh, legislation, uh, needs to pass this Congress as quickly as possible. Remember, this is a policy that already has been supported by lots of Republicans. Many Republicans supported the language in Title IV that says those dollars can only be used for weapons-free schools. So we are hopeful that they will join us in this resolution uh, in the House and the Senate clarifying that underlying uh, statute. Uh, so I, I, we've got so many people who, um, who need to talk today and, and, and tell you about how important that is. Uh, let me turn over the podium to uh, my great colleague and the introducer of the companion piece of legislation in the House of Representatives, uh, Representative John Hayes. Thanks so much, guys. Um, this is this is today is incredibly personal for me, as we are here on on the grounds of the Capitol on the first anniversary of the student walkout, and we see how how young people are elevating their voices and making sure that they're heard in these conversations. I stand here to tell you that I didn't need for today to happen to know how afraid young people are. We have all the statistics, we have all the background, we know what is already codified in law, but I bring a perspective of a classroom teacher. And I can tell you that as a teacher, I would have never wanted the responsibility in my school, John F. Kennedy High School, of securing a firearm with 1,300 uh, children. I wouldn't even know how to begin a conversation with a parent that said, my gun accidentally went off and hurt your child. That's not what teachers do. I've also seen the other side of this. My husband is a police officer, and I know that every year he has to go for training, he has to go for recertification, that he has to go for practice. Schools don't have the bandwidth to do that. We are not capable of doing that. But even more importantly, 
I wouldn't want for my husband or any first responder who's entering a school to have to try to make that decision or figure out in a high pressure situation, is this an active shooter or is this a teacher or someone who is an educational personnel? There are so many things that we can do to keep kids safe. There are so many good policy practices that we can do to make sure that when kids come to school, you know, that this, even if their home or their community or their family or all those other places are chaotic and they have fears, that at least when they're in school, that this is a safe place where they can learn. So I was so just proud to put forth this resolution that teachers don't want it and kids don't want it. My colleagues don't want it. Children don't want it. Parents don't want it to use federal funds to arm teachers. There are so many things that we could be doing to improve outcomes for kids. There are so many ways that we could be using federal dollars to make our schools safe and secure. But the idea that's coming out of this administration to arm teachers as a possible solution is just wrong. We owe our kids more than that and we can do better than that. You know, when we think of what did we do at this moment in history, when we have to answer for the hundreds of kids that are have, have, have ascended on this Capitol, what did we do to ensure that their futures were safe? I know that today I introduced this bill on the House floor. So thank you so much for coming out and I just look forward to to gathering support and really continuing this conversation in, in meaningful and productive ways so that we can ensure that we're all on the right side of history on this one. My colleague from Connecticut, and, and I'm with a great delegation. This was an easy sell to my delegation. Yes. Thanks very, very much, Johanna. And uh, uh, I am uh, honestly uh, so honored to be with my <laughs> colleagues today. Um, it was Senator Murphy, a fellow appropriator, a national leader on this issue both in the public discourse and within the Congress. Uh, Johanna Hayes, our newly elected member, and I think she brings her perspective uh, as, a, as, a, as a teacher and as an administrator, uh, and uh, she knows what works and what doesn't uh, work. Uh, she also represents Newtown uh, and is fighting for the measures uh, that will help to reduce gun violence, um, especially as a member of the House Democrats Gun Violence Prevention Task Force. Um, longtime dear friend, colleague Randy Weingarten, president of the American Federation of Teachers, more than 20 years at AFT. Uh, she fights and has fought to make sure teachers and school support personnel are treated with respect and with dignity and that they do have a voice in their future. Um, and that's why she is here on behalf of her constituency. And finally, let me acknowledge Doug Prouty. Vice President of the Maryland Education Association. He's an experienced teacher, and it really is great to have your perspective on this issue as well, Doug. Uh, as a chair of the Appropriations Subcommittee, which funds the Department of Education, among other vital agencies, I am really honored to be able to support this resolution. Since Sandy Hook, there have been nearly 2,000 mass shootings. Arming teachers is not the answer. It is outrageous that Secretary DeVos would even consider, even consider using taxpayer dollars on such a dangerous proposal. There is zero good research on the efficacy of arming teachers as a solution to school shootings. In fact, in June, when Secretary DeVos announced the Federal Commission on School Safety, she refused to examine the role of guns with regard to school shootings. The Student Support and Academic Enrichment Program, which is part of the Elementary and Secondary School Act, that was designed to help schools to create a better learning environment. The Congress intended it to expand students' access to mental health care, to art, to STEM classes, new technology. Because of our investment in these grants, School districts are able to offer students a well-rounded education. They provide opportunities and, and exposure to the education and the arts, the music. They promote healthy, active lifestyles, physical education programs. And this is, they get, the, the students get access to critical under-funded uh, services, mentoring, school counseling. This is not for guns and it is not for bullets. Secretary DeVos's lack of clarity 
has left the door open to states to take federal funds and use those funds for arming teachers or for firearms training. Her scheme is untested, unprecedented, unpopular. Teachers oppose a reckless and a dangerous policy. A Gallup poll in March released a nationally representative survey of 500 teachers. 60% said guns would make schools less safe. Last year, I joined with more than 170 Democratic members of the Congress. We wrote to Secretary DeVos to express our deep concerns. Her response was unacceptable. She refused, she refused to confirm that federal dollars would not be used in this way. Congress never contemplated that such flexibility would allow for the purchase of firearms. In fact, Congress denounced the presence of firearms in the school, and I can give you this citation. In the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, Section 41025B, it promotes programs that foster, and I quote, the creation and maintenance of a school environment free of weapons. Congress's opposition to taxpayer-funded uh, guns in school was reiterated in the Stop School Violence Act, enacted in the 2018 omnibus in the uh, aftermath of the shooting in Parkland. The legislation explicitly prohibits program funds from being used for the purchase of firearms or firearms training. Now, even the Department of Homeland Security under Secretary Nielsen has acted through executive authority to prohibit grant funds specifically intended for school security from being used to purchase guns. You get the picture. You can't do this. You can't do it. Last year, when we were debating the uh, 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 appropriations bill on labor, health, and human services, in a meeting with what they call the Four Corners, the two Democrats, the two Republicans from both sides of the Capitol gathered together. I asked for something very, very simple, and that was to put report language into the appropriations bill that would have said, follow current law. As simple as that. Very simple. I, I'm not ashamed to tell you, I lost that fight. I lost the fight to say, follow current law. It will be different this time around. I'm glad to see that we are advancing this legislation. My friends, elections have consequences. Democrats are in the majority in the House. We're going to use our power to keep our students and our teachers in our communities safe from gun violence. We've begun. We passed H.R. 8, the Universal Background Check Bill. And Johanna was like a crazy person on the floor of the house when that passed. She was, she was all over it. Last week, I had the opportunity as chair of this subcommittee, the first appropriations hearing on gun violence in 20 years, 20 years. We heard from experts who confirmed that the ep epidemic of gun violence is a public health emergency that demands public research dollars. The CDC, the Center for uh, of Disease Control and Prevention is a public health agency. It needs to be involved, as does the National Institutes of Health. And you can be sure, and I can tell these young people who are here today, as well as all of you, that it, in the bill, in the Labor HHS Appropriations Bill for next year, there will be funding uh, for research on gun violence prevention. Uh, both for CDC and for the National Institutes of Health. We need to make our, our, our uh, kids safe in their schools, and that means we should support the, support the NIH and the Center for Disease Control. We should allow the Federal Commission on School Safety to consider the role the guns play in school violence. And we should support the Student Support and Academic Enrichment Program to provide more mental health services as it's meant to be. That's what we are supposed to be doing. And, uh, and to really be loud and clear with Secretary DeVos. Let me introduce you now a very longtime friend, as I said, Randy Weingarten, who's president of the American Federation of Teachers. Um, she's been a leader on the issue of gun violence, especially with regards to classrooms and schools. She sent a letter to the president last year. She called on him to support common sense actions 
to reduce gun violence, listen to those who know what's best for schools. She's collaborated with other dedicated organizations, the NEA, Every Town for Gun Safety, to, uh, to demand action. She joined together in a letter to the Congress to urge us to implement proven st strategies to improve school safety. Um, she's a great friend and a tireless leader. Randy Weinberg. Thank you. Thank you very much for her. Oh, all right. All right, Senator. Uh, Senator I am not Randy. I don't come close to her genius or her eloquence, uh, but I'm going to take just a moment first to say how proud I am to welcome the students of St. Rose of Lima. Why don't you raise your hand? Guys, thank you for being here. Uh, you brought spring to the Capitol. This is the first night I say we've had in a long time. Thank you for being here. Uh, let me just say, we're here on a really momentous day for Connecticut. Uh, I don't know whether anyone has mentioned, I suspect you have. Today, the Connecticut Supreme Court ruled that the Sandy Hook parents can go forward with their lawsuit and that they will have their day in court to prove that the gun manufacturers are responsible and should be held accountable for the deaths of their children. That is a bombshell victory. It will change, potentially, the American legal landscape. And it is due to the courage and strength of those families who have fought uphill against the odds every step of the way when their opponents and many of the most knowledgeable legal experts in the country said, no way, no way are you going to succeed. There is a lesson in that courage and strength for us on the issue of gun violence, which is the good guys are going to win. Gun violence is going to be stopped, or at least stymied. We're going to win at the ballot box. We're going to win in the halls of Congress. We're going to win in the courts. History is on our side. And history tells us that arming teachers makes no sense. It makes schools more dangerous, not less so. It promotes more violence not less. To arm teachers is an anathema to common sense and sound policy. And the ones who tell us the facts, the ones who tether us to reality, are the teachers. When I want to know what makes sense in a classroom, I go to the teachers. That's been my policy as a parent as well as a public official. I trust the judgment of teachers, and 73% of them or more tell us they feel less safe, they will be less safe in a classroom where they are armed. For all the reasons that have been articulated so well already, the difficulties of training, of safeguarding, of assuring safety when there is a firearm in a classroom. So. We ought to listen to the teachers. You know, the jobs of teachers are more difficult than most I know, certainly more difficult than what I do. Teaching is a really hard job. Why make it tougher? By having them responsible for carrying firearms or accessing them. The responsibility is on us. We ought to pass sensible common sense measures like background checks and red flag statute and safe storage, all of the measures that Senator Murphy and I are seeking to advance in the Senate, that Johanna and Rosa are seeking to advance in the House. Our delegation has really been standing solidly and proactively on this issue. I'm very proud to be a member of that delegation, and I'm prouder still to introduce to you someone who is a powerful warrior whose courage and strength I admire, I've admired for years and years, who's really a model of public service. Thank you, Randy, for joining us today.
So as um, you know, we got we got three teachers here, and as um, as uh, Rosa and Johanna was speaking, I actually kind of um, I have a a poster in my office that I have had since I was a teacher at Clara Barton High School in Brooklyn, New York, a high school teacher. And that poster says, I inspire, I encourage, I empower, I nurture, I activate, I motivate, I change the world, I am a teacher. Nothing in the last 30 years in which I've been involved in education would have prepared me for a debate about whether or not I or my colleagues should be armed with guns as opposed to armed with books or social workers or guidance counselors. And I find it just incredibly harmful to even be having this debate because it is insanity to me which is part of the reason why I am so grateful that this bill is being introduced by Senator Murphy and Congresswoman Hayes and supported, you see, the people who were there when Newtown happened. My members and children got killed in Newtown. My members and children got killed in Parkland. And how dare we do anything that will make schools less safe. There are many things we can do, including actually doing some research about what to do. Red flag laws, safety issues, locking classrooms. But the one thing that will make schools less safe is to actually have teachers armed, even if they are trained. In the nine states that do it right now, there have been over 20 unhinged, un, uh, unaffected incidents that have happened where all of a sudden a gun has accidentally gone off. 20% of those incidents. What happens if there is a real incident? What is a school teacher supposed to do? Lock her door or get her gun? What happens in terms of that gun being stored? What happens between a pistol that a teacher might have and kids running around in a situation that is so unsafe and a shooter having an AK-47 that could shoot 600 bullets in a minute? This is why my members who actually are members of the NRA are more decisively against this than almost anyone else. Let us do what works in schools. Let's nurture, let's teach, let's have mental health services. Let us not do something that will make schools less safe. We are completely in support of this bill and we'll do everything we can to make sure sanity prevails in this house as opposed to the insanity of arming teachers. Thank you. Um, and uh, finally, bad and clean up, uh, let me uh, introduce uh, Doug Prouty, who is the vice president of the Maryland Education Association, who is here with his daughter, who was amongst uh, the thousands who uh, walked out of school today, marched on the Capitol, uh, demanding common sense anti-gun violence legislation, uh, both to Doug and your daughter. Uh, thank you for being here, Doug Prouty. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Yep. Thank you to uh, Senator Murphy and Representative Hayes for leading on this issue, and for Representative DeLauro and Senator Blumenthal for supporting this. Um, I'm Doug Prouty, high school teacher of 23 years. Teachers and other educators know that providing a safe and secure public school for every child is a prerequisite to learning. Putting guns in the hands of school employees will not make schools safer. This is an unreasonable demand to ask of educators, nor is it reasonable to require students to be in a classroom in the presence of firearms, especially in the hands of those on whom they rely and trust to keep them safe, both physically and emotionally. 
we are skilled at creating positive relationships with students, letting them know that we care about them as individuals who are growing, learning, and finding their place in the world. We are not, nor do we want to be skilled at armed conflict. The presence of armed educators in schools will make students feel less safe, especially those who experience the threat of gun violence in their neighborhoods every day. School is and should be a sanctuary. It should not be another place in which the threat of violence is ever present, and reminders of that threat, guns, are as commonplace as books and laptops. We know that long-term and sustainable school safety requires a commitment to preventative measures. To do that, we must dramatically expand our investment in mental health services and other proven interventions, such as restorative justice practices, community schools, school-based mental health, and other efforts to transform and improve our school climate and school safety. Using funds to arm educators which could be spent on supporting students who are suffering neglect or trauma is unconscionable and bad policy. Arming educators with guns will not improve school safety. 82% of teachers surveyed in 2017 by the National Education Association stated they would not carry a firearm in school. 69% said that school employees with, uh, with guns would make them feel less safe. No amount of training will prepare educators to use a firearm safely and appropriately. It is much more likely that there would be more innocent lives taken, not fewer. Instead, our public policy efforts should focus on arming educators with resources that will truly make a difference in both the short and long term, including additional school psychologists, counselors, nurses, social workers, and community schools. And finally, I want to commend the students who are here advocating on the Hill today for gun safety and safe schools, including my daughter Olivia and her friend Lena, and some of my former students as well. They know and we know that arming educators is not a solution. We need books and computers. We need more time and fellow educators. We need smaller classes to be sure that every student has at least one adult at school who the student knows cares about them and their future. That's what will help students feel safe, not guns. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So one last thing, uh, you know, this is being introduced as an independent resolution in the House and the Senate, but because this is a clarification of an existing appropriated program, um, it is very relevant to the appropriations process happening in the Senate and in the House, and, and Representative Delora talked about uh, that fact. So in the Senate, we will certainly be attempting to build this resolution into the appropriations uh, discussion, uh, as well as pursuing the legislation independently. With that, we have time for a couple of questions, if there's any. Uh, listen, re re Republicans understand uh, that the world has changed and that the NRA is no longer in charge of this place. Uh, I, I, I have had uh, discussions with Senator Alexander. Um, I, I think he is interested in continuing those discussions, um, but will be much more interested knowing that he has to get a bill passed through the Democratic-controlled House of Representatives. Uh, it was very easy for Republicans to say no to our efforts to clarify the underlying statute when they controlled every branch of uh, the legislature uh, and the White House. So my, my instinct is that we have increased leverage. The last conversations I had with the Republicans on this topic were uh, last, were last fall. None. What the issue is here is that she has allowed, the secretary has allowed this door to be opened so that it can be interpreted in that way. That is what we, the resolution will address. It needs to get shut down. That's in response to your question is what we, are, what we will be able to do in the House, given that we have the majority, is to talk about following current law uh, and not allowing these grants to be used, as I said, for arming. Uh, teachers or for firearms training. 
but in fact no is the answer to your question but we've got to make sure that that is airtight and i would just say speaking for myself i don't concede the title for allows for federal funds to be used for gun purchases and and our resolution is an attempt to clarify that it does not so um the administration makes the case that it does uh we and many other people who have read that statute uh uh rigorously don't believe that it does all right thank you very much everyone appreciate thank it you. thank you all right nice, nice job. Thank, thank you very you. much thank you thank you, thank you sir thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. important backdrop thank you. So. Thank you. Thank you. yeah absolutely